Hmm. What's up, fellow chess learners? Part two, here we go. So before we, we get into it, um, a friend of mine was watching um, part one and talked about puzzle 36, and um, which was our second to last one there where I just was trying to calculate lines where the um, queen was moving to queen d8 or queen d6 and I couldn't make out an advantage from there so I just end up moving knight d5 and hoped for the best we'd take a look at it after that and I realized then why that was difficult for me and the way I always think about attacking a piece and if it's defended or not if I can if I can win a piece with an advantage or went upon or whatever, is think about the number of defenders and the number of attackers. So we, we were looking here at uh, the bishop on f6, and I was thinking, okay, I got two attackers, my knight and my bishop, and then he has two defenders, his knight and his queen. And I thought, well, two attackers, two defenders, that's not enough. You always have to have more attackers than defenders. And then you have to look at, um, you know, if, uh, if one of your attackers is a piece that's worth more or something, and if that works out, but in general, Two attackers and two defenders so i looked at this here and i thought well i don't i don't have anything here i'm not winning anything and so it dawned on me last night that that's not the only thing then that's important is you have to look at the quality or the state of of each one of his defenders and in this case um when i take knight knight takes f6 his queen is attacked and obviously if this was a rook that that'd be that'd be fine i was just thinking with the queen well he could just swap them out um i guess i, I just wasn't thinking that um so there's a bit of a caveat to the two attackers two defenders i don't have anything but the, the state or quality of the one of the de defenders is is if, if the value of that piece is so high that if it's captured the opponent has to respond to that and recapture then that's not even a defender so really in this case this is two attackers, one defender, because this queen can't be counted as a defender. Because um, knight takes f6, knight takes f6, uh, queen takes f6, he then has to has to recapture. Not only that, but I, I guess not even having to recapture, um, in this case he just loses a defender. So if a defender is attacked, then there's, there's a good chance that maybe that piece can't even count as a defender. All right, so I, that was a little, I was thinking too simplistically in that one and I thought it was a good learning point. So with that said, let's get started. I'm gonna to try to do these a little faster. Hour and 20 minutes was out of control. If I don't talk these out loud, usually a run to um, you know the 30s takes me like 20 minutes if I just click and think in my head. This has taken me a little longer because um, I have to speak it out. Not only that, I still have to pause sometimes and look at the square to be able to say it out loud, what it is. Um, so that's something I'm still working on as well. So when I speak, sometimes I'm pausing and that's because I'm trying to figure out what square that is to say, what square I'm going to. So first puzzle, and again, if you wanna solve these, if I'm, if I'm going too fast, um, you can do that and see if you can solve them before I get there. But your uh, back rank problem right away. I look at the position of uh, the opponent's king and then my king first when I open these things just to get a feel for what's going on. This guy has a, a back rank problem and we can attack there and do check and then he can defend uh, with his knight and we'll take that and that'll be checkmate, problem one. Same thing here. Um, usually for the first 10 or so, you're going to get back ranks, we're gonna sacrifice our queen back there with check, he'll take with his knight. Knight takes e1, and then we'll take with our rook and checkmate as a back rank. Here, um, this is cool, I like this one. So our bishop is defended by our queen, and uh, so the king can't take it. We can come here to knight takes f2, and that's checkmate because this square is taken off and f2 isn't defended. That's a fun one, I like that one. Um, back rank again, rook a1 check, looks like uh, he could block with his knight, block with his rook, and when you take those, those squares aren't defended, and that's that. 
Okay. Um. Hmm. This looks like a mate in two. We take our queen to b8 check. Um, he can come here to c1, to which we can respond. Uh, we'll try to draw arrows here. Maybe this will be better. Queen, queen b2, and that's checkmate. And it's also checkmate if he moves um, king to a1. And that's the only options I see for him. So I think we're good there. I'm also going to pause between moves instead of just moving real fast, thinking there's no way I could have made a mistake in calculations, because indeed there is ways I make mistakes in calculations. So Rook takes um, E1, all the activity and fun happening here on E1. Um, he takes with his Rook, and then I take with the Queen for checkmate. I think that is all there is to that. Okay. Um, white to move. Well, there's a fork here. That is nice. Um, I think that's as good as going to get in this one. Um, getting used to these these forks is. Um, I'm still I'm still working on it, but getting used to seeing pieces on the same color. Uh, is important here on the same diagonal is always got to do be um, two diagonals between like if this rook was here there's actually no way to fork those two pieces but um, watching pieces on the same color is important for the knights um, of course after after that fork I take his rook uh, his bishop's going to be able to take my um, take my rook but then we can just push our pawn for promotion or he can give up um, give up his bishop for our pawn so it's a winning endgame for us at the end of this okay white to move well right away at the tight at this discovered check here with the knight would be something I'd be looking at um, in a game but this bishop to g4 looks great um king has only this square here h2 to come to after that we can move our um rook i have to be careful make sure i'm right clicking or i'm going to end up moving one of these pieces with these arrows rook to h8 and uh that's it for the king that's checkmate so i think made in two here all right Well, I gotta say that um, queen to c7 comes to mind right away. And um, the king can only move over here to a8. That's it. After that, we'll, we can hit this rook. Queen takes d8, check. The only move from there is he blocked with this bishop, bishop c8, and then. Um, Queen takes c8, checkmate. So that looks the best I can see. Okay. Well, is it just me or is this queen undefended? <laughs> uh, so I don't, um, you know, there's a check here. Bishop to c4, but just takes. So, wow, just an undefended queen, huh? I, I don't see any. Oh, yeah, actually, after we take that, well, that's interesting. So this is a little more complex. Um... I'm glad I took a look at this because after queen takes d4, he has bishop e3 check. Bishop's defended by his rook. And um, so he's he's got a fork there. Well, I don't know, a fork. I can't remember what that's called. It's not a skewer. 
something else. And that's kind of driving me nuts. Um, anyway, uh, so we would have to take with our queen, and then his rook takes on e3. Now, the only saving grace, I think, with that is that then we have bishop c4 check, and it's a discovered uh, with our rook hitting e3. And then we're up on exchange. Both our queens are gone. Um, is it exchange, or we're just up a piece? I take his queen, he loses a bishop. Queens are gone, he loses a bishop and a rook. So never mind. We're up two pieces. And... Yeah, I guess that's that. I think I've thought that through enough. So we'll start here. Then we go here. Then we go here. And we take his rook. And that's fun. Fun one. So I like this square right here. Queen b3, check. And uh, his only response then, he has two escape squares. Our rook here is owning. Um, owning his escape squares here. Yeah, I like clicking on these squares. It makes things more clear, um, at least for viewing. And then queen takes b2, and that's checkmate no matter which square he chooses to go to, c1 or, or b1. Okay. White to move. All right, so white's in a or black's in a precarious position with this king here, and it looks like a simple king move can be a checkmate. This square is blocked off for him. This square is blocked off for him, and we just move our king out of the way here. King to g2, and what? I think that's checkmate. Don't see a way for him to get out of that. Okay. Well. Oh, so this is cute, I guess. Um, this rook to a4. We're threatening mate here on a2. And threatening his queen. Uh, of course, if he takes our rook, then um, we'll take his queen with our pawn. So and I think that's his only um, option there, where we just win his queen. So he would have to do that. No way for him to move and check us. So this seems the way to go. All right. I like to move. So promotion looks great with our pawn on a5. What would he do to stop that? So um, nothing. He's not going to stop it. So one, two, three. By the time we get a queen, he's down here. And the other thing is he's promoting on, on a different square than his bishop. So once we do get a queen, one, two, three, one, two, three. So one, one, two, two, queen, he's here. We can slide our queen back down to a2 and uh, his bishop can't protect his promotion square. So that's, that's that. And I believe a2 is our only answer here. Okay. Well, options. Like, 
I like the idea of bishop to h3 and then threatening mate here. Um, he could defend with uh, rook to f2. Oh, another option that's a little perhaps better. I don't know how to get rid of these arrows once I draw them. Oh, okay, there we go. d5. Now we have checkmate here or here, so that even if he moves his rook up, of course, our queen's threatened. So, scratch that. Um, something more forcing. I think... You know, what if we played rook takes g3? Well, he's only got one response. h takes g3. Oh, okay. Queen takes g3. He's only got king h1. Bishop d5. Check. And then... Rook could block, and then just bishop takes f3, and that's checkmate. So rook takes g3, h takes g3, queen takes g3, king h1, bishop d5 check, rook f3, bishop takes f3, checkmate. That's that. Oh, I didn't have to go through all that. We are white to move. Well, we're, our pawns are headed this way, headed up. A lot of times with these only kings and pawns on the board, I have to look at the numbers to see what's even going on in my life. Um, we, pr we protect this promotion square. This pawn is going nowhere. And uh, this pawn tries to go up, we take it. He can come over here, try to take our pawn and then promote, but it's way too slow. We promote in four moves. This king can't catch us. And that's that. Okay, 16. <sighs> All right. Well. White to move. So I'm looking at this, if this D pawn moves, and it opens up the diagonal for our queen. Um, but let's see if I can get, get my queen here on h8 gives the the king this bishop could come back and block here or his king could move to e7 f7 um not seeing where that's getting me yet see you know all his pieces are defended so if he did move his king back I mean if he did block with his bishop um, the other thing we could do is rook takes e8 and then he can, he'd capture with his king and then he's away from his bishop so that's that but that is that is if his Bishop blocked. Now the other option, I guess, is if he played a different move, king f7. Now our queen is attacked. Um, we could go queen h7. 
He comes back. Yeah. Is there any benefit to opening this diagonal? Should get this knight more active, but he's just kind of worthless. Always guarded by the bishop or the pawn here. Neither one of these squares are is useful to us. So what if we played rook takes e6, rook takes e6, pawn d5, c takes d5. Queen h8 check. Now there is no blocking. He's got to come to one of these two squares. Came here to king f7, queen h7, check. I wonder if there's a way that I could get once this rook is here on its own, it would be undefended. Hmm, and if my pawn had moved, I could. Get my knight in here for an attack. Or if there's a way, once I get his king back in here, to fork his king. Oh, what if I... d5 now. Bishop takes d5. Hmm. Well, that's something. Um... Uh, okay, something's forming here now between some combination of. So if I play um, bishop, or I say pawn d5, right? Um, if you play bishop takes d5, then I can play queen to h8. And wherever his king moves, I have this um, e8 square I could take with my queen and check. Or with my rook if I want. So that's nice. However, if he doesn't do that, and instead... I don't know what else he might have. Um, there's, of course, c takes d5. That does open up this. And... God doesn't like my calculation skills. That's what's happening right now. He's angry that I should be solving this faster. Um, okay, so bishop takes d5, and we got this sorted out. That's, that's wonderful. So what we'd like to do is open this file um, with our rook pointing down it. So now we got to figure out this other one where if c takes d5. Now the e-file isn't open, but as we said, we have this b5 square available to us. So there's that. Now, the nice thing about that is if we did play this, bishop takes b5. We're threatening his rook at that point. And then his rook is guarding his bishop. So rook to e7 to try to hang on. Uh, 
And with that, Ah, yeah, you know, another thing we could do that is a double attack is if we could get like our queen here on f6. Now we have two attackers on this guy as well. And that's, we can, I think that's doable. We're back here. Um, oh, yeah, instead of going down here to, to A8, we just go to F6, Queen F6. And um, then his king, or, well, I guess his bishop could block. Um, then he's going to be in some trouble, though, with uh, what we talked about before. Okay, so cool. This is, this is a pretty involved tactic. As far as the options so we talked about um, d5 bishop takes d5 um, and if that's the case um, then we're gonna win his rook after we go Queen a h8 I'll try to draw arrows here for us Queen h8 King well his bishop could block and if so if his bishop ever blocks down there rook takes King takes Queen takes on g8. Okay, so that's that. Now we've played it out to um, d5. C takes d5. Now we'll go queen f6 check. Right, and um, Uh, what if he blocks with his bishop? If he blocks with his bishop. Then we come down again. And uh, queen h8 check. Now this square is protected by the um, by our rook on the e-file. So his only option at that point is to block with his bishop. And that's when we can take his rook. King takes, queen takes g8. Okay, so we've got all this sorted. Um, this looks good in, in every case. Let's play it. And and so so there's that. I you know to me this move is pretty random, and I just I'm not blaming myself for not calculating that move because I I don't. It seems bad. In any case, um, now what? Well, we'll take his queen exchange. We're going to win his rook. Win his rook with our pawn or with um, our rook. Take his. We're going to do um, d takes e6 or rook take e6. I don't really know what is best. I think I like rook takes e6. Because uh, we're, at that point, we're threatening um, d6 as well. Um, of course, if he played rook takes e6, bishop takes e6, um, his king might come over to threaten our pawn, our pass pawn, then we have knight d4 to protect it. Boy, this one is taking some time. In any case, let's take it. And it's a little unsatisfying when they don't let me go farther um, after we've taken so much time to calculate. Okay, problem 17. Um, well, black to move, or up a, well, he's got an exchange, but we've got an extra bishop, so 
We've got a battery heading down to the king there. That's interesting. Um, with our with our queen and, and 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 rook or queen and bishop here, pointing down. I don't see that it's getting me anything right now. Could um. I was looking to see if I could like interrupt the communication here between these two rooks, but that just uh, drops a piece. Oh goodness, alignment issues. So um, yeah, his king and queen are on the same diagonal, and I have that dark spirit bishop, which is nice. And that looks um, that looks like that direction almost certainly will be headed. Um, so there's flags. I, I went through a book on chessable called tune your chess antenna tactics or something like that and they talked about signals for um, seeing tactics in a game and one of them was alignment peace alignment and so um, I'm trying to get used to looking at that by the way if you're thinking about going through that book it's it's advanced um, I want to do it again after I'm better at, at tactics and calculation but it was fun and valuable to go through when I did but so let's go so Bishop b6 and uh, we've got this skewer and what best response so again we'll try to let's say disprove our idea We'll play as black and or play as white and if our opponent was playing as black and played bishop b6 how would we respond well like in desperation i'd probably play rook d8 check king g7 um and i think that's the end of his fun and then just then you got to take queen takes b3, get something for your queen. Most of my opponents resign at that point. <laughs> um, so I don't see anything else possible. Okay. All is well. Well, okay, immediately we see this tender, f2 square. And uh, I think this is gonna be a mate in two, which is weird. Or no, not not two, um, three. So we go, queen takes f2 check. This king has one escape square, it's gonna have to move. Boy, gonna have, gonna have to move here to d1. Oh. Yeah, so now we're going to play knight, e3 check, and again, his king has one escape square over here to c1, and then this square here is mate with queen to c2. I think that's all she wrote. Again, taking a couple extra seconds as we go to make sure nothing was missed. Okay. Um, so, you know, you look down right away, see, see H7. Looks like um, he's weak. Two options in there. And right now the, the problem is this um, E7 square is an escape square for the can. I don't want him out of there. My, my queen is the one that's that's blocking that square right now. If I had time, I could bring my rook over. Um, you know, rook e1. Cut that off. The other option, of course, is I could win a rook here. Because if you do queen takes h7 check, king f8, 
Queen H8 check, King E7, Rook E1, and then King, I don't know what, one of these squares, I guess, was likely. Then um, Queen or Rook can take H8. And, um, you know, whether or not the King moved here or here would matter at that point. So we could win a Rook and uh, we're up material. That's nice. But I'm just wondering if there's a mate in here. Like instead we took with our bishop and then backed our bishop out. But no, the queen's gotta get in there at some point. We have back rank issues here, um, but our rook is protecting us at this point and I think we're safe. So let's play it out. D6, seven, king, two, f8, queen, h8, check, king, e7, rook, e1, check, and doesn't matter where he goes, we do win that rook. And that seems like a pretty big gain. And we've got He's got a rook and a bishop, and we've got rook, bishop, and knight. So I'm going to head that route because I don't see anything better. I'm going to continue to look as I move. I didn't consider that. I did not consider that. Okay, so that's disappointing. I should have considered that. Um, of course, we can play rook takes e6 check. He takes with his king. We win his rook. If he takes with his pawn, f, t f takes e6. Hmm. Takes e6. I guess we have a, a check with our queen over here on h4. He doesn't have a way to block that. But it feels like things have fizzled out. I can check on h4 right now. Hmm. Well, if he takes with f6, oh, I see it. If he does f takes e6, uh, his queen's unprotected over here, and then we can do queen takes Queen takes g7, and we're skewering there. So okay, we're good. We'll take we'll take um, e takes rook takes e6. He takes with his king. We're gonna win his rook. He takes with his f pawn. We're gonna win his queen. So that's good. All right. So we're in an end game. Black to move. We're going north because the number one's up here. I just gotta take time to do that. Um, so I'm gonna queen in two, he's gonna queen in two. Now the thing, you notice with this, so he queens one move after I do. And then this diagonal here, uh, his queen happens to be in line with his king. So after I promote, he promotes, I'll be able to play queen ace, a two check and um, skewer to win his queen. And then we'll proceed to, to to win there. So I think we run and promote. And 
hooray for us. Wow, so he's got a made in one. And we're in a terrible bind. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I see a perpetual, I believe. I thought I did. Man, we're in a real nasty mess down there. We get our queen in the middle with like queen c7. That sh shuts down his fun, as far as I can tell. Uh, of course, the other thing, so we go down to queen e1, check. He only has king g2 once he's at queen g2 I was thinking I could come up here clearly I can't bishop has that covered that's when I thought I saw perpetual but not happening um, that fizzles out This king on g2. I don't have a way to get in there. I can't capture any of his pieces. Capture that pawn, but then I just get mated. And I have a material advantage. So I don't mind at all trading pieces. So if I played queen c7, I mean, he did queen takes you know, like a6. Um, and then I would just try to get out of a bind with like king e7 and try to get my rook, my rook out into action in some way and get my king out of trouble here. Um, let's just take one more look. Queen e1 check, king g2. I can't get on these light squares at all. So, and then my queen's out of, out of the action. So I think this is it. Like, I don't see any other way to stop this. I, like, I'm closing my eyes here. Okay. I was feeling nervous. Back rank looks wonderful. So he's got two protectors here of the d8 square. And if I take his rook, rook takes d6, um, then I'm going to have problems with queen c1 check and soon to be mate. So my rook is glued there a bit. Now, okay, so yeah, the other option then, I don't have to head to c8. I can go queen a8, check. And then he's got a block with one of his pieces and then I have two attackers, one defender and his mate. So that's queen a8, check, block with bishop, Queen takes d8 check, rook takes d8 check, rook takes d8 checkmate. And the other way, rook, queen takes, d takes. Okay, good to go. It's an x-ray there going to the d8 square. 
Black to move, we're heading north. Okay. Um, well, we have two options here. We're in check, and I either take with my king or I take with my pawn. And meanwhile, while I'm doing things over here on whatever side of the board this is, I guess it's the queen side for us. Um, while I'm doing over things here on the queen side, he can come over here to the king side and take this pawn and then promote. However, that's a lot of moves because he can't come here. Um, the, we have to keep this pawn alive as long as possible and I don't like this if we um, take with our take with our B pawn then he's got this past A pawn which is not cool so he's got one two three four squares to capture then he's got to get out of the way that's five and another four to promote that's nine whereas I go here King takes C4 I, I own this side of the board and so I got you know one two and Four. That's six moves. So he's way behind here. Now, the puzzle's going to stop here. It always does. That is not an easy win <laughs> from there. I don't do uh, have an endgame book at Chessable. Um, for a queen versus a pawn that's on the seventh rank there with the king and it still work so it's it's funny how they have those an easy one and cut it off because like you still got to know what you're doing um okay well, our queen's not in danger because his f pawn is pinned um He has two to well three defenders if you count his king there on f7 that includes his pawn. Um, I like I, I like getting a pawn to f3. And I think e4, f3 is a pretty forcing combination. Material's pretty much even here. We're up a pawn. But e4 threatened his knight. And then f3. His f3 pawn is banned and we threaten his queen. Uh, that seems really nice. Of course, his queen can move to, to a f1. Then I don't, I, I don't know what. We could break into his position with, um, his queen's overloaded with the f7 square. So we did like bishop takes f, I'm sorry, f2 square. Bishop takes f2, queen takes f2, and then our queen takes d3. Um, we went a pawn, kind of cracked open his position a bit. Oh, no, I'm smoking something. He just plays knight takes f2. And we're down. So, if I play f3 now, queen takes f3. What? Nothing there. So, e4 looks like the only reasonable move to me. And what do you do if you're white? So I play e4. It's protected by our rook on the e-file. You know. You don't have anywhere to go. You 
play knight to b2. Um, you know, he can move this way. And uh, now I play, now I can play the f3 that's protected. But then I, queen f2, or queen f1, I don't know what I do once I get down there. Like, what's the game plan? I don't know. I know it's great to march this center down the board. We got a nice, strong center. This queen's tied up forever. I could also swing my rooks up. A little rook lift. But I don't know where to go from there, really. But positionally, it seems wonderful, I, and I don't see anything else. Guess I'm gonna have to go for it. And that's what he plays with his knight. A little unclear to me. I'd love to look at number 24, like in an engine, to see if he moved his knight to b2, how we take advantage of it from there. So that could be something we could do. Let's do. Oops. Twenty-four. We'll take a look at as well as the ones we miss. After this. Okay. Well, we have a a couple of checks that we could do. And the really cool one is with our queen and with a discovered attack on his queen. So we could do, we just need to work out which one is best and why. We've got here and here, gives an attack on his king and then opens up um, the attack on his queen. So, is there a difference Ah, indeed there is. So if we played queen c5, then he could block with his pawn, um, d4, threatening our queen. And then and then we have to move our queen or swap queens. Where if we come back here, queen b6, when he blocks with his pawn, he's not threatening us anymore. So that seems to be the way to go. Of course, if he blocks with his queen, oh, so here we go. This isn't all wrapped up yet. He blocks with his queen. Okay, well then we play bishop c5. He blocks with a d5 pawn, then we play bishop takes d5. He's still in the same bind. And that's that. Okay. This looks an awful lot like a smothered mate. These are fun to do. I think I've only ever had one in a game. I've played 3,500 games or something. <laughs> one with this pattern, but you see it frequently in puzzles. So we've got to the knight to h6. That's a double check. Double check the king always has to move. He only has one square. He's got to head over to h8. At that point, we can bring our queen down here to g8. Check. He's got one move. That's rook takes. And then our knight comes back to f7. And uh, his king smashed in the center there. So. That's that. Tried this in a game. Uh, actually, if, like last week. Except you always have to remember if it's his queen that's down here, if this was a queen instead of his rook, then when you do your old fancy big smile, you know, knight f7 check, his queen just takes it. So that happens. All right. So we're down massive material. Nothing looks like it's going well in this game. 
Um, so, um, clearly, we've got to be super aggressive right away. And queen d2 gets blocked by his rook. Rook e2. And uh, our fun is over that way. So it feels an awful lot like I don't want to play um, queen g3 because that lets him kind of run away here. I like queen h2 that takes away this escape square, and our knight already has e3 taken away as well. So if we head over to queen to um, h2, can't go here, here, here. He can't go here or here. He's just got this square right here, the... Um, F1. Once he heads to F1, then we have a check right here. And my goodness, I guess that's mate. Yeah, mate in two. I guess the important thing is picking um, H2 as a check square with, with the queen. And I guess this that's lights out. Oh, a mate in two. That's puzzle 28, okay. So it is. Um, so our G-pawn isn't protected. And uh, we got our queen and our rook barreling down here, which seems great. Uh, I'd like to cut off this escape square the same way we just talked about. So instead of, instead of queen to um, h6, Heading down to queen to h7 feels nice. Way to go. King takes g5. King takes g5. I feel like moving my queen back to h6, stepping him down into danger. As a matter of fact, I think that's checkmate. It is. Can't come here. Our queen will be guarding this diagonal. These two are protected by the pawn. So, queen h7 check. All he's got is king takes g5. Queen h6 check, mate. Now they're mate in two. I think the key here is probably just why these are higher rated. Higher rated, I mean, others, others are getting them wrong is uh, checking for these escape squares and making sure you're starting your queen in the right spot. Okay. White to move. So, material's even again. I like I like the idea of rook takes e7. Um, only thing about it is our bishop is undefended, so the move order is important here. What I'm thinking is rook takes e7, king takes e7, and then we have knight to g6 right here, which forks the rook and the king after we take. The thing is, if we played that first. Um, before we could take his rook, he could take our bishop. Um, so I, I, I think we have to start with bishop takes d7. Bishop takes d7, king takes d7. Rook takes e7, king takes e7. Then knight. Knight to g6, check, king f7, knight takes h8, and what if he plays king g7? Our knight is trapped. And we're actually not up any material. How about that? So...
maybe then the thing to do is to save that. Start with rook takes g7, e7, king takes e7. Yeah. Yep. We just got to switch the movers, move order. So we'll start with rook takes e7, king takes e7, knight g7 check. Okay. And we got to keep that king away one square. Knight g, knight g6 um, check. And we'll let him move somewhere. If he comes towards our knight, ah, let me get my head straight here. I was thinking if we could take the bishop second, then his king would have to attack, and then we could take his rook, and we have enough time to get back out here the g6 square and run away. So, um, So yeah, let's start with the rook again. Rook takes e7, king takes e7. We can't play bishop takes now because then he just takes and we don't have a fork anymore. So now I have to play knight g6, fork. Now I could just, no. I have to play bishop takes, yeah. And I play bishop takes d7 right away. And if king takes, I take his rook. King moves towards my knight. I take his rook. Okay, so that, that move order is important. We start with the rook. We'll look at it. Okay, I don't like missing puzzles, <laughs> but it always happens three times when I play this. So, all right, um, but we went to 29 without missing one. Well, that's something. Um, man, that just seemed to work. All right, here we are, black to move, shake it off. Um, So he's got his knight um, on f3 protecting his bishop. So we do have a fork with knight d4. Knight d4, we're going to fork. So say we play bishop takes f3, his bishop takes plays f3, and then we play knight d4, and we fork his queen. Um, and his bishop. Only thing is, his queen can move to d1. What if his queen moves to d1? If his queen moves to d1, it's pinned. And I can move my queen to, um, to f5 and put a second attacker on it and attack his bishop and have a second defender. Oof, boy, this is messy. So let's step it through. Bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3. Knight d4, 
queen d1, queen f5. Okay, so I swap a piece off. Oh, man, what on earth am I? It's not pinned. I got it's like fog going on. <laughs> I was like, I took, I, I took on F three, and then yeah, that bishop still exists. No, it doesn't exist. However, um, I do have two attackers on it. And then an attacker. So it's a queen, queen f5 is the answer. Um, because then I have two attackers on f3, and I'm also attacking his uh, undefended bishop on g5. So that definitely seems the way to go. Bishop, bishop takes f3. Bishop takes f3. Knight d5. Fork. Queen d1. Queen f5. I got two attackers on this bishop. And then my queen is also attacking g5. Gonna lose a piece. So let's get her done. And okay, well that's pretty clear. If I if I take the knight takes f3, then his knight takes f3, and that defends his bishop. So I gotta take his bishop here. Okay. Well, we got this cool check. Queen takes d4. That exists. There's also two attackers on um Also, two attackers on e1. The order here seems important because uh, if I started with queen takes d4 check, his queen could swing over to f2 to block, and then that's a second defender on e1. And I don't want that. So if I play rook takes e1 check, rook takes e1, rook takes e1 check. King F1. I was thinking maybe I could play Queen H4, like X ray protect the rook, Queen H4 check, but then he blocked with his G pawn. And the thing might be just to pull that rook back. Win a rook and run away. Or, before we take that second rook, if we put the queen move in the middle, rook takes e, rook takes e1 check, rook takes e1 queen, x, d. Oh, that looks juicy. Queen, x, d4 check. I think he's got to block with his queen, otherwise we just play rook takes e1 checkmate. So he's got to block with his queen, of course he can block with his rook, but then we just take the rook with our queen. Um, if he blocks with his queen, then we can play rook takes e1 check. His queen's pinned. His queen would have to take, and then queen takes e1 check. Or, um, no. Had to bring his queen down. Okay, I think putting that in the middle is good. Let me talk it through one more time because I just stuttered. Rook takes e1 check, rook takes e1, queen takes d4 check, queen f2, rook takes e1 check, 
mate. Yeah. Okay. So a cool in between move here. Oh, God. Mm. Oh. I got the blood boiling. It seemed beautiful. It seemed like artwork. <laughs> Whew. All right. Man, it's hard to shake those off. Like, it's hard to shake that off and move on. Okay, so... Um, okay. Um, well, we got to do something in our in a hurry it seems <sighs> so what if we try like rook rook g7 check hmm of course he only has king h8 And now what if we like got crazy here and then played a uh, rook g8 check? Just trying to get like his queen involved. Rook g8 check. If he takes with his rook, then we've got mate takes f7 checkmate. No, not checkmate. King can go to h7. Boy, yeah, this takes a toll on the brain. My brain is tired. Rook g7 check, king h1. And I was thinking, what if we played rook g8 check? King takes um, h7 check. Oh, his queen's down here, too. Gotta watch that. So, rook g7 check. King h8. Knight f7 check. Rook takes f7. Ooh, I get, then I get a chance to bring my queen down here this way. Check. And yeah, the only thing he's got then is to block with his rook and then mate. We're gonna one more time. I've done it twice where I thought it was just seamless and wasn't right. So rook g7 check, king h1. Knight takes f7 check. Only one way out of it, rook takes f7. Queen d8 check. No way to block it. Except the rook. Rook f8, check. Queen takes f8, checkmate. So it is. If it's wrong, I'm... Fine. 31. Um, Black to move. Okay, well... Wow. We certainly don't have a lot of development going on. This queen looks a little trapped. Um, so, like, what if we attacked with our bishop? Bishop e7. What could he do? He really just has one square, I think, with that queen. That's queen g3.
looks promising somehow. What do I do when I get in there? He's got that, um, this square right here is F3 square, and then he can get away. We don't want that. So knight is also unprotected on E4. I don't want to get caught up in one idea, but um, there's something there. Like even a move like queen c4 attacking his knight and the c2 pawn is not nothing. Bishop e7. Oh, well there's queen takes g7. And then I like the move rook to g8, aiming at his king. Hmm. do when I aim at his king. Not only do I aim at his king, he just doesn't have really any other escape squares except they're on the H file. When he does go on the H file, then what if we played Queen g4, threatening mate, threatening his, threatening mate, threatening his rook, mate in two spots, which beat that. The only thing is, um, he has knight f6, and that forks my king and my queen. He just beat it, because I don't have my pawn on g7 anymore. Uh, Bishop B7 just seems great. Like a great start. I'm really stuck there. The pieces aren't very active. I have a tactic in here. I'll have to threaten that rook. Knight G or Queen G four. So Bishop E seven. Two moves. Queen G three. Uh, I don't know. H four. And then, you know, he could offer a trade of queens here, which, you know, I could move out of the way and threaten him with my bishop. But it's this f3 square again. And he gets away. But if my queen was moved, I could also play bishop g4, and then I'd be um, lining up there with the queen and the... in the rook yeah my brain's tired Like, I'm just not even wanting to work this puzzle out. Maybe I need a break. Let me just press pause, get a drink. Okay. Um, Bishop b7. Queen takes g7. Rook g8. Queen G 
Gotta watch that fork with this knight on f6. And then also bishop e7, queen g3. And I don't know. Just looks like things fizzle out. h4, queen h3, move my move my queen, threaten his queen. Yippee. I mean, it's, I say yippee. I mean, of course, we got, you know, h3 at that point, which positionally is great. I just don't see a, I just don't see a tactic. I'm just going to play it. So I I mean okay. I take with my queen. He plays queen takes at g8. So I take with my bishop. Rook takes d8. And I'm gonna end up a rook before it. it's over, I think. Right? Bishop takes. And the other thing I could do is just move my king. Of course, then he moves his queen, his his knight with check. I don't want that. So ah, uh, what even happened? Did I have a piece there? Like I'm confused. He's got two minor pieces, two rooks. I got two minor pieces, two rooks. Okay. Um, take, take. Take. Threaten back rank. Take, check. I have to find out how to come ahead. I, I, I have to move my king or capture this knight. Capture with my queen. He captures my rook with check. I have a back rank possibility down an exchange. Doesn't seem good. Bishop takes d6. Rook takes d6. Threatening my queen. I guess I take his... Rook takes g7, take his queen. He's got to take my queen and then I take his rook. Okay. Seems the way to go. Yay. All right. Um, why not? <laughs> so my knight is pinned. What's wrong with just pawn takes d5? Rook takes d5 check. I'm 
up a piece. It's going to be where to move the king probably after that. With this two rooks barreling down the board. So, um, pawn takes d5, I think, is the only thing that semi sounds reasonable at all. Otherwise, he's got a discovered check when he moves his bishop, and life is horrible. So, just pawn takes d5, rook takes d5, check. Now what? Can't play knight takes d5, we're pinned. So, now I got an option of fork escape squares or block with my bishop. And hate to pin a piece, but um, no, I said I have an option of four escape squares. I don't. The E file is taken off. That would give me one escape square. I am down to two legal moves. I have C7, King C7, or Bishop C7. Cool thing with King C7 is we unpin our knight, um, which okay because you know whatever Rook E7 check, Rook E7 check. I have one square. No, I don't. I, I could also block with my bishop there. I don't know really, really know which is best. Um, with my bishop d7 just don't want to let his other rook come down with tempo that's where I am with it like and that gives my other rook another square to move one thing is that it keeps me pinned down with my knight And before I think this through for an hour, because I'm not going to do anything different than this. Okay. Um, all right. Two moves. King c7. Rook e7. Check. How am I doing here? Like, I don't want to get chased all over the board here. Where am I going to go then? Well, I guess I could go to King King C six, threaten his his pawn, I mean his rook, and then he just plays C four, protects his rook, and the king's out in the center of the board with two rooks chasing it around. Sounds awful. I'm gonna go black with my bishop. I am not happy. I'm not gonna lie about it. <laughs> little fumy, little fumy. All right, um, let's see here. This guy here. Oh yeah, I thought this was where I was a genius. No. I'm disagreeing with this puzzle. Okay, let's play it out like they said. This, run, this this runaway pawn he can't stop I can stop his 
Yes. But what was wrong with my idea? I start here. Exe seven. And then I went here. So he's playing king f6. Yeah. Okay, fancy play syndrome. Okay, that's a shame. Just got to think about if I did lose my knight, then what? Well, then I win. Trading everything down was good because I had a winning end game. This was my in-between move. Again, genius play. Oh, I actually did that. Oh, and I could win his queen. I thought I had a mate, so let's see. So I played this, played this, then I played this brilliant move. King F1. Oops, yikes. It's the King F1 I didn't see. I just did blocks with queen. And blocks with queen is indeed a mate. It's good for me. <laughs> King F1. Okay. King F1. And the last one. We also have the one that we said we were going to take a look at. This, uh... Well, we know the story here. Check. Check. This was tough. Bishop d7. Bishop x. f7. g x7. 6. Look, d. e to d1. Yeah. Yeah, he just piles on me. So, king c7. I was fearing this. It says, yeah, okay. Then I, then I just thought he would do this. Guess I'm up a lot of material here. Okay, and finally we were going to look at puzzle 24. Oof. Man, somehow I gotta not be as angry as I am inside right now. Six. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twenty-two, twenty-four. Really? This happened last time where I had a hard time identifying what I wanted to go back and see. Oh, so it is. That was a trip. Um, puzzle rush it is. Good luck, guys. And girls.